Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to CA Travel Talks. I'm just going to give everyone a couple of minutes to join in. And as you're doing that, I just wanted to, to let everyone know we do have a Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. If you have any questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to drop them in there and we will be sure to address them at the end of the presentation. So I see a few have joined us now. It's Karen Taff. I'm calling. I'm presenting from CAA in the North and East and you're in for a treat. We're going to be going to Europe tonight. We thought, you know, especially for the romance of Europe, we've got Valentine's Day tomorrow. What a perfect way to treat your Valentine and book a beautiful trip to Europe. And I have our very special preferred partner with us tonight, Member Choice Vacations. We have Rob and Kelsey with us. So thank you so much for joining us this evening. Really happy to be here. Thank you for having us. Thank you. All right, I think we can get going, Kelsey. We've got a good number that have joined us. So CA Travel, we have been selling travel since 1961. We offer full vacation traveling, whether you're wanting to do a cruise, an independent trip throughout Europe, or an all-inclusive, or of course, tonight you're going to be taking an incredible coach journey, journey through Europe. And we have some very special partners we work with, such as Member Choice Vacations, that offer us exclusive member benefits, which you're going to hear about tonight. So CA Vacations is a very special program. A couple of the items that are included for you are a 24-7 member care and best price guarantee program. And perks vary from, you know, if you're doing a cruise, it can be an onboard credit. And these are exclusive benefits that you're not going to find anywhere else, whether it's extra night stays or savings or Basically, it's some kind of a value that is exclusive to our members. And as I mentioned, they're not meant, you're not going to be able to find these anywhere else. And in addition to the incredible benefits that they offer to you, our members, we love working with these partners. We've been working with them for many years. We have solid relationships and we know that you're going to be in great hands. So the first thing you need to do is check your passports. Make sure they're up to date. And if they have expired, please get them renewed. And uh, some countries do require you to have a valid passport for six months. So your travel counselor can certainly guide you on that. But if you need to come in and get your passport redone, come, we'll do your photos for you. And they will be for free if you are a plus or a premier member. And if you are an everyday or a classic member, they're only eight fifty. dollars you can actually earn some CA dollars by using our CA reward partners. And if you go on our website and just hit rewards, you'll be surprised at how many partners do offer you some savings and some CA dollars. And you can apply those to your actual next trip. You're going to save on professional booking fees with us. And if you need to do an international driving permit, we will issue those for you in the stores as well. Well, one thing we learned over the past few years is how important travel insurance is. And I still say to this day, it is the most important thing that you pack, mm -hmm. whether it's in, you know, your cancellation, your interruption, your baggage protection, but of course your medical coverage. And as a CA member, you're going to be saving up to 20%, which is incredible. If you need some new travel accessories or some luggage going into the stores, you can save up to 20%. And a new partner for us this year is Shell. You can actually save three cents a liter on Shell at participating locations. I just want to add on to what Karen had said. Uh, travel insurance is so important. If there is one thing we learned through the pandemic, it's how important that is. So take and, that with you. And still to this day, although the, the delays and the cancellations have much improved, it's still happening. So you need to make sure you're protecting your investment and you've got some peace of mind and your trip is going to be worry free. So it's my pleasure to introduce our absolutely favorite partners. We call you Member Choice Vacations because you are our number one choice and you're going to be taking us on a journey to Europe. Thank you so much for joining us, Rob and Kelsey. Of course. Hi, my name is uh, Rob Pugliese. So for, uh, for this presentation, I'll be your resident history nerd. Um, and of course, I'm the account manager for Member Choice uh, Vacations. And this is? I'm Kelsey Marchetti. I am the virtual events and training manager here at MCV. Uh, and we are going to take you on a journey throughout Europe. And we are so excited to get started. Uh, so we have been to a number of these destinations here uh, that we're going to review today. And we just wanted to share you with you some of our favorites. So this is me in Pompeii. Uh, so in 
Italy. It is such an amazing, awe-inspiring place to go that you can just like really feel the history and understand what an impacting moment this was for Italy. Yeah, and this is me at the Colosseum in Rome, um, of course. And uh, I'm a, as I said earlier, I'm a big history nerd, so I absolutely loved being at this place. And as as good as I am at, you know, knowing the the history and the years and, and all those things, fashion is clearly not one of my things because you can see in that picture, I'm very clearly squinting, but I have sunglasses hanging right from my shirt. So, you know. A little embarrassing, but it is what it is. <laughs> At least your hat's not backwards. That's true. That's true. <laughs> I can't pull that off. <laughs> I got to say, Rob, uh, the Coliseum is probably my number two favorite iconic site that I've ever seen. It's absolutely breathtaking just to see it, just how large it is. The pictures don't do it justice. What was your number one? Um, the Eiffel Tower. That is one of those sites that absolutely took my breath away the minute nice. I saw it. Nice. Very romantic. <laughs> <laughs> is the Coliseum your number one? Absolutely. Absolutely. Everything about it, I, I absolutely adore it. I did the, the underground. I did the above ground. I, I did everything about it. So it, it was fantastic. Such a great tour. It's so neat. So you're going to hear a lot of talking from us tonight. So we want to just show you a little bit about the people who actually make these tours. I live in Australia and I design our tours. I live in Italy. I live in Croatia. Portugal. I live in the United States. In Japan. Portugal and Spain, and I design. And I design. And I design. And I design our tours. Our tours are created for travelers by travelers. There's no middleman between our brand promise and our travelers' experience. Travelers get access to the real local culture. They'll see how people eat and live and how they do business in the countries that we visit. We're curious about culture. And we know that you are too. It's Tuesday, it must be Belgium, is our guide on what not to do. Every day is new and different. You'll eat in local restaurants and in locals' homes. You'll take cooking classes and do dine arounds and join a walking food tour to explore a city. Of course, you can also explore a city by dog sled. Or tuk tuk, trolleys, safari jeep, public transportation, and even a vintage car. And you'll overnight in igloos and in tree houses. And in castles, chateaus, and Italian villas. You get the point. <laughs> and speaking of where you'll overnight, we have the fewest one-night stays. Because when you go on a trip that you've been dreaming about, you shouldn't feel rushed. I hate feeling rushed. Your time is best spent in the destination, not driving between them. We design tours to spend the fewest hours on the coach as possible. And your tour is more inclusive. You'll get the must-see and local experiences, not one or the other. Because we get it. We get it. We are travelers. We are travelers. We are travelers too. I live in Australia. I always love that video. Uh, again, those are our designers. Those are the people who live in the destination and are building these tours for you all. Yeah, they're Rob absolute experts and just absolute wealths of, of knowledge. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about our partner of the month uh, promotion here. So, so you get to save up to 20% off of tours worldwide using the code MCV24. Um, and of course, you can pair this with the other CAA member benefits. So save $100 per person on all tours and receive up to $75 credit on a pre-purchased optional excursion. Just keep in mind that the travel window is between... Uh, March and August of 2024, and October 15th to December the 31st of 2024. And like Rob just said, it's worldwide. So we're going to give you a little taste of some of the places that you can go, uh, but it is any tour that MCV sells. And today, for coming here tonight, if you book by February 29th, you're going to receive an MCV tea and biscuit selection so you can sit back relax sip explore the brochure and dream about your next vacation let's dive right in uh before we get to the destinations i want to share with you the style of tours that we have so we have five we have explorations classic spotlights river cruises and faith 
Today, we're going to review three different kinds of tours. So we have explorations, which are small group tours. These are capped out at 24 people and they are designed for smaller groups. So there's a common misconception that we take our large groups and we just cap it at 24. Nope, not it. These are curated for small group experiences. This means that you're going to get closer to the action. So instead of a cooking demonstration where you see how they make pierogies, it's going to be a cooking class where you get to make the pierogies yourself. And these tours are really hyper-focused on really immersing yourself into the destination and getting to know the local culture and the people. The classic tours are capped out at 44 and these are really great for people who either haven't been to that destination yet because it's going to give you all of those iconic sites in a nice, easy pace, or somebody who is just even new to guided touring. And then lastly, we'll, revisit, we'll visit uh, spotlight tours. So these tours are perfect for those who usually like to do some cruises uh, because you get to one hotel, you unpack once and you stay there for the duration of the time. You really get to know the city that you're staying in and you also get to do a hub and spoke kind of experience, which means you're gonna stay in one city, travel to another the next day and really get to know that region. Uh, these are also capped out at 44 people. So now that you know the styles, let's go to our first country. Italia, my motherland. Not really. <laughs> I, I was born and raised in Canada, um, but my parents are from there. So I grew up very much within the culture and I've been there a bunch of times. And it is a place of historical cities, charming towns and villages, and just such a rich history and world famous cuisine, of course. Um, you also get the must-see cosmopolitan cities of the north and the central, but then once you start getting down to the south of Italy, it's much more of that Mediterranean culture, so it's a leisurely pace to it. With more than 20 tours to choose from across all five of our travel styles, there are all sorts of ways for you to discover Italy with CAA member choice vacations. Um, so what part of Italy is calling out to you is my question. The food and the wine. The food and the wine. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the play of Romeo and Juliet, of course, was set in the city of Verona. Um, but what is really interesting about that, they actually have a volunteer office called the Juliet Club that responds to over 6,000 letters of heartbreak annually. And they do this all by hand. That's so romantic. Isn't it? <laughs> um, and of course, Italy is renowned for its incredible cuisine. So um, what's so special is that you can find different types of great food um, basically everywhere. There's there's 20 different regions in the country and each has their own specialty. So, for example, Naples is the birthplace of the margarita pizza, um, whereas mm -hmm. Sicily is much more known for its incredible street food culture. Now, Italy, as far as like culture and, and pace is, is known for the idea of la dolce vita um, or the sweet life it is what and that is what travel is all about right so you know you want to savor those things that bring us joy and and living life to its absolute fullest and italians are well known for uh, our welcoming culture and our welcoming nature um, we make sure that you feel right at home um, but make sure you bring a belt with some extra room so you can put some more notches in because you're going to eat <laughs> Um, and of course, our tours are culturally curated um, by our team of local designers who have the inside scoop to make sure that you have a robust, fulfilling journey and includes both the must-sees and a deep dive into the culture. And of course, there are so, so many different things on the bucket list um, as far as sites in Italy. So you have the canals of Venice, you've got the Trevi fountain, you've got the leaning tower of Pisa, and of course my favorite, the Colosseum. Um, but for all of those, uh, there are so many travel stories just waiting to be written in places like a family home for a home hosted meal, um, or maybe a small local business you'd be hard pressed uh, to find on your own. Um, but the great news is that I've got 
two tours uh, selected here for you of our over 20 uh, to sort of introduce. Um, but one thing I just want to sort of go over quickly is that these are both tour activity uh, level three uh, tours. So what this means is it, they're for the on-the-go traveler who doesn't want to miss a thing. So walking and standing uh, for longer periods of time, usually two to three hours, um, isn't a big deal. Um, a moderately paced uh, two and a half hour walking tour covering several miles, hills, and uneven surfaces is no problem for you. Um, walking four miles over the course of a, of a day is very doable, as is climbing in and out of various modes of transportation. Um, you can climb you can climb three flights of stairs um, and handle altitudes between six and nine thousand feet. So um, you know, expect some days that can be a little bit longer as well, but it's balanced out with leisure time. Um, so you can recharge your battery, or if you want to keep going, you can just go on another adventure. Um, and the last thing that I just sort of really want to highlight here is that this is not fit for travelers who require any sort of uh, mobility assistance devices. So now that we have all that out of the way, Let's talk about our treasure, our treasures, art, food, and wine of Italy tour. So I'm going to go over a bunch of highlights and must sees, um, and, and this is again just the just the taste of of what to expect. Um, so you know, you get to spend two nights in in romantic Venice. Um, you get to immerse yourself in in Florence's culture uh, um, or countless treasures on a guided tour of the city. Um, you you uncover the prismatic uh, landscape of the Tuscan countryside, which is which is absolutely stunning if you've ever been and, and you've seen it. Um, you also get to explore the Lake Orta, which is really cool. It, it's one of Italy's actual hidden treasures, and you get to discover the colorful colorful Cinque Terre, which of course is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. And um, the marble quarries aboard off-road vehicles. So you get to, you know, switch up your transportation mode a little bit, which is really exciting. And, you know, you get to see the countless treasures of Florence on, on a guided tour. Um, as far as food goes, you're going to taste authentic gelato at an award-winning ice cream parlor in San Gimignano. Um, you're going to learn the art behind Tuscan cuisine during a, a hands-on cooking lesson. Um, so just some really, really interesting things here on this tour to, to take advantage of. And now if we take a look at our spotlight of uh, Northern Italy tour, um, some of our must-sees, of course, are romantic city of Verona. You get to explore that. But then you, you can also cruise the waters around Venice and dive right into the island city. Um, you get to enjoy up-close look of the Dolomites, the mountain range, uh, which is one of, of course, one of the world's most beautiful. Um, you get to also discover the hilltop of a solo, a solo mio, uh, <laughs> award-winning title of Italy's uh, most beautiful village. And of course, explore uh, Bassano, the, the hometown of Italy's renowned schnapps called grappa, which is very strong stuff. So take it easy, do yourself a favor. Um, and... <clears throat> And of course, you're going to you're going to uh, tour a winery in the Prosecco Hills and sample the, del the delicious sparkling wine. And Rob, open... you were not kidding. Uh, bring that big belt. Bring your stretchy pants because these Italians are going to feed you. We don't mess around. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Bring on the pasta and wine. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> okay, where are we going next? We are going to head to the United Kingdom. Uh, so we have 23 different tours that go to the UK. And all of them are going to see the bustling city streets of London, the awe-inspiring views of the Northern Ireland, Ireland's giant causeway. I'm going to tell a really fun story on that later. Uh, the incredible pomp and circumstance of the Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo CAAMCV has something for every traveler across the board. If you're looking for England, Northern Ireland, Scotland, Wales, this destination is a really great place to start, especially if this is your first time traveling internationally because there's no language barrier, except for their funny words and accents. Of course. 
<laughs> so our Valentine's Day trivia here is on Gretna Green. So it's a little village on the Scottish border that's world famous as a romantic wedding destination because in uh, 1754, they outlawed, um, well, they got rid of the law that forbade young lovers to marry if they were under the age of 21 without their parents' consent. Uh, and in today's day and age, over 3,500 couples get married there a year. Mm. Again, so romantic. <laughs> Young love. Young love. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're like me, you are obsessed with a couple of things. Outlander, because we all love Jamie. Uh, the World Wars. I really love World War II. Uh, and the Tudors. And of course, the Beatles. Whatever it is, the United Kingdom is an incredible destination for history lovers. And there's niche historical uh, sites too, like Jack the Ripper. Uh, so can I jump in? Can I jump in? Can I jump of in? Of course, please. All right. So fun history fact. This is where I get to flex that muscle a little bit. <laughs> in the older UK homes, what you'll notice is that the base of the home is quite small. And as you go up, it starts to expand. And the reason for that that was because um, they would get charged taxes based on the amount of land that their house was on. So it was kind of a workaround from that because, hey, I'm only taking up this little bit of space. But in fact, you'd have a, a little bit of a, a larger home to it. Anyway, continue on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. That's I didn't know that. You know, that's interesting. I feel like there has to be some really creative architecture around that because if you're putting a big building on top of a little base, they get... Well, it was a fire hazard. That was the problem. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, because <laughs> the upper building was made from all of wood, and a lot of the heating was done at the lower levels to kind of try mm -hmm. to heat up the house. So if anything spills over, you have yourself a bit of a problem. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> What's so neat is on these tours... These are the little tidbits that you're going to pick up um, so you can impress your friends no matter where you go. But the UK is really, um, it's steeped in history, no matter where you turn. So much so that uh, many Canadians can actually trace their cultural heritage back to the United Kingdom. Uh, so I don't know about you, but I love that Ancestry show where you go on Ancestry.com and you find who your grandparents' grandparents were, you go back to their village and you feel that much more connected to, to your history, their history, and you get to learn a little bit, something about yourself and pick up new traditions. Uh, so between the history, the heritage that you can be connected to and the art everywhere you turn, there is something there for you in the UK. <laughs> Some tours that I picked out are... Uh, Scotland, land of lore and legend. So as Rob had mentioned, um, activity levels, this is a activity level three. Um, so it's going to be a little bit more active. Standing on your feet, you want to think cobblestone streets, being able to move around up and down stairs onto different transportation. Um, but it has stunning scenery. Um, mountain ranges of Glencoe. You get to go to uh, Loch Lomond and search for the Loch, Loch, Loch Ness Monster and visit the Edinburgh Castle. Um, but don't hear it from me. Let's hear what these people have to say about it. Hi, I'm Carolyn. And I'm Jackie. My name is Stacy. Bob Peterson, and this is my wife, Jan. They're enjoying our tour through Scotland and England. I always see where they're going. I said, that's the one I want to do because it was going to all the places we wanted to go. Well, I like the UK very much. It's fascinating to see the architecture. The people are lovely. All of my experiences so far have been wonderful. I loved Scotland and everything about it. I loved going through the Cotswolds. I loved everything. The highlight of the tour so far, I think, has been Bath, where we're at right now. That was just amazing to see that yesterday. The Roman baths are just, they're so old and it's just amazing. Getting a glimpse of the countryside and the rolling hills, I didn't expect England to look like this. Just an uh, amazing tour. I especially enjoy the countryside and I like the architecture and the history. The highlight of the tour so far 
has been Hadrian's Wall. I know that sounds crazy because it's in the middle of nowhere, but it was almost a spiritual experience because of the depth and breadth of the wall itself and the history behind it all. It captivated me. I prefer the exploration tours. You get to see sites that you might not ordinarily be able to see. I really enjoy the, the traveling with a smaller group. It's more intimate and you get to know your tour leader very well. Everybody's got a great story to tell about where they've been, so it's a great exchange. Laura, our tour guide, is unbelievable with respect to her knowledge base and the comedy and the story she tells. We just really have, have enjoyed her, um, her guidance. Yeah, she's been taking care of us and leading us along the way and, and helping us and, and we're learning a lot from her. Everybody should travel and see the world. You just don't get the flavor when you're sitting at home. I, love I just, <laughs> I, I do too. It's so awe inspiring. I just realized that I said that that video was about Scotland, land of lore and legend. It's not, but it gave you a really great taste of what you'll see if you choose to go to Scotland. The, uh, and, and Laura, uh, they talk about Laura in that video. She is the most amazing tour manager. She tells the best stories. Uh, she tells creepy stories. She tells fun, whimsical stories. I ask her every time I see her if she'll record videos um, or audios, so bedtime stories. She keeps telling me no, but I could listen <laughs> to that woman for hours. The other tour that I chose uh, is the coasts and countryside of England's uh, countrysides of England. Um, it's a 14 day tour, also a level three. So you're going to experience uh, Scotland's vibrant capital city. It's filled with history, modern culture, stunning architecture, um, endless winding streets, those really cozy towns that make you feel like you want to just wander along the cobblestone streets, get to know those people and hear their stories. And <clears throat> earlier I had mentioned the Beatles, so Beatles fans. Mm -hmm. On this tour, you're going to go in the footsteps of John Le um, Lennon and visit Strawberry Field, which is home to an interactive visitor exhibition, uh, cafe, shop, and a really gorgeous garden space. Strawberry Fields forever, man. Strawberry <laughs> Fields forever. <laughs> All right. Now back on to me and we are going to talk about Greece. Um, so from the classical ruins of the days of legend, you have jaw dropping landscapes. Uh, you must absolutely see to believe. And of course they have their Philodzinia, um, which is the unbeatable hospitality that you're going to receive. Um, this is Greece. This is the home of uh, Homer uh, to home cooked meals quite the range, but yes, it's true. Uh, I mean, you get to venture uh, on a journey to the land um, where epic poems meets epic cuisine. Now, part of the Greek custom, of course, is putting a sugar cube in the glove or the gown of a bride um, for the sweet life. So, you know, between the sugar ice cube and La Dolce Vita in Italy, his Amir, we sing a little bit of uh, a theme here with the Mediterranean about having a sweet life. <laughs> but yeah, that's just another little fun fact for Valentine's Day to keep everything sweet. Now, Homer and history. Uh, so the offer of the Iliad, of course, was Homer and the Odyssey, which wrote of the retelling of the Trojan War. Funny enough, they found the city of Troy, which is located in modern day Turkey. Um, and you'll step into this story um, on the tour of Greece. Um, and history lovers uh, can visit Mycenae, uh, once ruled by the mythical king Agamemnon, um, commander and chief of the Achaeans, which is an old school, well, today is Greece, but back then they were known as the Achaeans. Um, and during the Trojan War. And then, of course, you're going to travel. Uh, travelers are going to spend time in the in Olympia, which is the home of the Olympic Stadium, where the very first Olympic Games were held in 776 BC. Um, so, of course, as far as scenery goes, Greece has a warm, sunny climate. So you get to enjoy more than 250 days of sunshine a year on average. 
Um, we have four, we have tour dates uh, that go from March to October because there's really no bad time um, to go to Greece. And, you know, the water, the water in Greece is, is so beautiful. So it, it's different. It, it's this dark navy kind of blue. It's, just, it's a really deep color versus like the turquoise that you would see in the Caribbean. So it, it's a very different look, but absolutely beautiful. And of course you have your home cooked meals or your home cooking. So you, you fed to believe that the culinary scene in Greece is one out of this world. Um, so when I was in Greece, I ordered salad and you, of course, if you're in Greece and you want a Greek salad, you say salad because you're in Greece. So you don't need to specify. Um, but when you're over here and you were to order that, you know, you get a little bit of feta on top and, and that's all well and good. But over there, they were bringing actual blocks of feta on my salad. I'm salivating just thinking about it. Um, and, you know, it's, it's part of it's. Part of the whole experience in Olympia, you get to dive into the local culture um, with a visit to a local farm. You get to meet the owners of a fourth generation family run property um, and enjoy the, the tasting of local wines, olive oil, um, homemade jam, marmalade, sweets. I get to learn to cook some of the region's best dishes um, during a Mediterranean cooking experience, which is followed by a traditional Greek lunch on your way to Nafplio, which is, of course, the original capital of Greece. So let's talk about some actual tours that I've, I've chosen here. Um, we have classical Greece. And some of the must-sees that you're going to see here is you're going to have the opportunity to join a local expert to explore Athens um, and all of its famed sites. Um, you'll also get to explore the grandeur of Olympia, birthplace of the Olympic Games, like I mentioned earlier. You get to view the you get to view the the Corinth Canal, which is one of the great engineering marvels of the 19th century. So that's really really cool for those that are into um, engineering, especially. Um, you get to come to know two breathtaking Byzantine monasteries monasteries uh, in Meteora, which is was built over 600 years ago. Um, you also get to experience the Delphi Museum um, with its priceless collection of ancient artifacts. And you get to broaden your knowledge of traditional Greek music with the delightful Greek dance class. Um, so there's so much going on. It's such a cool experience. Um, and, you know, we can't forget about the food. I've been talking about food this whole time. Um, so you get to taste olive oil. Again, homemade jams at the local farm of the Peloponnese countryside. Um, you also get to um, visit a family-owned distillery uh, that's been making ouzo, which is like an anise-flavored uh, liqueur since 1869. So if they're giving you the tape, like the it, to sample, and it's a little harsh, put a little bit of uh, ice water in it. It turns it almost like a white kind of milky little kind of look to it, and they call it lion's milk. So there's no shame in watering down your alcohol. Um, and of course, let's talk about the uh, the other uh, itinerary that I looked at. It was exploring uh, Greece and its islands, uh, Santorini and Mykonos. Uh, so you get to explore Mykonos, the whitewash jewel of the uh, Cyc the Cyclades Islands, um, at your leisure. Um, you also get you, it also features uh, the Meteora Monastery and the Olympi Olympia visits uh, from the previous itinerary as well. Um, this tour will also have the uh, Byzantine monasteries, Delphi Museum, and the Greek musical dancing. So it, it, it does cover a little bit of what the previous tour covers. Um, but it also has, of course, Mykonos and Santorini. So you get to have an awesome winery tour um, and a light lunch in Santorini. Um, so that's that's basically it from me. Back over to you, Kelsey. Rob, have you not had dinner tonight? Because all you're doing is talking about food. No, I haven't. I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> this is not helping. <laughs> you know, I often speak on the culinary experiences myself. Um, but eating every, like going to a destination and getting to experience their foods and their, their, their cuisines and the traditions that they put behind each of their foods is so important because the best way you get to really know a culture is 
through your belly. It's so Mm -hmm. true because you're going to know what these people grew up eating and why it's important to them and how they take care of their land and their earth so that they can harvest these foods and what they do with them and the innovation that they've created to make the best wines or to press the best olive oil. And I'm just as passionate about food as, as you seem to be. Oh yeah. (laughs) I'm glad you brought it up as much as you did. (laughs) You should have been at my Super Bowl party. (laughs) Filled, filled with food. (laughs) All the food, I love it. All of it. (laughs) Let's go ahead and walk our way over to Ireland. So it's the Emerald Isle and it's calling your name. So it's a patchwork quilt of emerald green hills, seaside cliffs, the birthplace of Oscar Wilde, James Joyce, and of course, the home of Guinness beer. If you haven't had a Guinness beer right out of the tap, from the Guinness Brew House, you are missing out. Go ahead and put that right there on the top of your bucket list and go get a pint with us right here on one of our tours. Almost all of our tours that go to Ireland do uh, include the Guinness um, storehouse. So make sure you get there. My very first tour with MCV was to Ireland. This is baby Kelsey over a decade ago. Uh, This was my second international trip I had ever had in my life. And I'll tell you what, Mm -hmm. Ireland was the perfect place to have that like nice ease back into figuring out a different destination, different cultures, different accents, and understanding how much travel is life. It became my passion almost immediately. And I am so grateful for that experience every day. Um, This is the Cliffs of Moher and it is breathtaking. It's outstanding. The picture just truly doesn't do it justice. I think I've already said that. And I guess I just, I'm not appreciative of pictures because they never seem to do anything justice. I'll tell you what. Uh, So what is my trivia here? So it's hand fasting. So it's an ancient Celtic ritual, which hands are tied together during uh, the ceremony to symbolize the binding of two lives. So it dates as far back as 7,000 BC. We all did see it in Outlander. So it was happening in Scotland as well. And (laughs) when two people chose to be married, they were brought together. They had a braided cord or ribbon tied around their hands uh, in the presence of a priest. And that was it. They were uh, engaged and then married. I don't think I need to give you any reasons to fall in Ireland because it really is a destination that is on the top of everybody's bucket list. So much so that about 7 million people in 2022 traveled to Ireland to experience the, you know, the sites, the people, the culture, the food. Uh, 7 million people, that's 7 million people going into those cozy pubs, seeing the Cliffs of Moher, kissing the Blarney Stone, and getting the gift of eloquence of speech, Um, seeing the Blarney Castle, seeing the sheep, um, the iconic sites, the picture-perfect landscapes. So Ireland is built on centuries of history. It's romance, it's legend. Um... It is such an enchanting, romantic place to go. You're going to fall in love with the people. I love their accent. And most of all, I absolutely love their storytelling. I actually have a story I'm going to tell you here in a bit. Um, You don't really have to do much when you go to Ireland because you can just sit back, relax, and really just appreciate the rolling hills and that creepy little mist that they have creepy is not the right word but the mist that rolls in that and it's just you can just appreciate the absolute pristine beauty of it but we're gonna do a lot with you when you get there so the two tours that i picked out is best of ireland it's an activity level three you're going to meet a traditional senchai which is an irish storyteller i love the irish storytelling Um, But you get to listen to folklore and legends that have been passed down through generations as you sip on one of those Irish whiskeys. Um, On this tour, you're going to enjoy a traditional game of hurling, which is fascinating to me. I love seeing the um, Irish Olympics where men are just like throwing stones and logs and stuff. It's amazing. 
Um, all of our small group, most of our small group exploration tours have what we call an impact moment. So social responsibility and corporate responsibility is really close to MCV's heart. Uh, it's one of our core values, so much so that we've built it into our tours through impact moments. So it's a all our, our designers, they go out into their region and they find a business that is doing really good work for their people. Um, and the one on Best of Ireland is our city tours of Dublin. So your guide is going to be from Secret Street Tours and your guide was gonna is going to be somebody who was formally affected by homelessness, but they were able to get a job by learning how to share the history of their city and were giving back while also learning about their culture, their city, and all about Dublin. Um, you're going to learn about Derry's pol uh, political history during a local guided city tour, uh, taste the traditional flavors of Ireland in a local pub. You're going to taste a lot of food at a lot of pubs, all very different, diverse cuisines. Um, Ireland has always had kind of a bad rap when it comes to their food, but every time I've been there, I've had the most interesting dishes. Um, 10 years ago, when I've been to Ireland three times now, but a decade ago, I had this, this bowl of mussels that I still think about at least once a month. Um, couldn't tell you what was in it, but I remember the way it made me feel and it was felt home and cozy and just so delicious. Um, the other tour, oops, the other tour that I picked out today is uh, Irish Splendor. So this is an activity level one tour. Uh, we have very few of them that are international. Most of our activity levels are going to be in North America, uh, be in the countries that abide by ADA laws. And when you go to these places that are steeped in history, they're usually paired with ancient ruins and cobblestone streets. Uh, so keep that in mind when you are shopping for your tour. But the Irish Splendor is an activity, activity level one. It's a classic tour where you'll visit the Dingle Peninsula. You'll see the Rock of Cashel. Um, you get to stay in a historic castle. So you get to pretend to be a king or queen for the night. You'll enjoy that uh, city tour of Dublin, uh, which is also the impact moment. You get to kiss the famous Blarney Stone at the Blarney Castle if you choose to. Uh, but if you do kiss it, you get the gift of eloquent of speech. So you will be able to talk your friend's ears off, but in the best way possible. Everybody will want to listen to all of your stories. And you're going to discover the breathtaking scenery at the Cliffs of Moher. And a visit to Ireland wouldn't quite be a visit if you didn't have some kind of whiskey tasting. So you'll get to do a whiskey tour and tasting here and um, go to a traditional Irish farm to see how their sheep, um, sheep dogs do their work, taste some homemade scones and taste some tea. Now, both tours go to the Giants Causeway, which was very high on my bucket list. It is such an interesting place to see. And while I was there, I heard the story of Finn McCool and I want to tell you about it. So Finn McCool was a giant in Ireland and he had heard that there was another giant in Scotland who wanted to take his reign. And it enraged him so much that he started picking up rocks and tossing them into the sea. And as the rocks landed, they formed sort of a bridge. And he thought to himself, oh, what a great idea. I'm going to build a bridge with these rocks walk over to Scotland and tell that giant he cannot have my land or my reign. This crown is mine. So he makes it all the way across Scotland and he creeps up onto the land and he sees the biggest giant ever. He thought he was a big guy. This Scottish giant was twice his size, enormous, and Finn McCool decided there was no way that he could beat him with brute force. So he went back across the bridge, back to Ireland, and he cooked up a clever little trick. So he and his wife dressed Finn McCool up 
as a giant baby and lured that giant to their home. When the Scottish giant arrived and saw the biggest baby he had ever seen, he thought to himself, if that giant baby is that large, I do not want to see who sired him. So he turned tail and ran all the way back to Scotland while breaking up the bridge so that he may never set eyes on the giant who fathered that baby. And Scotland and Ireland could never collide. And that is the story of how Finn McCool kept his reign in Ireland. Wow, what a story. Now, imagine that story if I had a really great Irish accent and I could pronounce all of those Celtic names. Um, it's amazing. You get chills. You love it. They, It's amazing. The storytellers in Ireland are top notch. Um, Scotland, too, because they're just really into their traditional stories. And I, I hope you guys don't mind that I shared that story. But Giant's Causeway is so neat. When you when you look at it, you're like, there's no way Mother Nature created this. So you have to believe that Finn McCool was the one who built this. I'm not I'm not going to question it. You're convinced, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that has been our walk across Europe with you. I hope that you enjoyed it. I do want to say, I understand we went through a lot today. We gave you a ton of tours, a ton of information, but this is just a teaser. So I really urge you to reach out to your travel counselor to tell them what you're interested in. And they are so full of knowledge. They're going to be able to tell you which MCV tour is the right fit for you. That was wonderful. Thank you so much, Rob and Kelsey. And you can actually see in my background, I have Kyle Moore Abbey behind me. Ireland is definitely one of my favorite spots. And the cuisine there is amazing, whether you're eating in a small little pub or a five-star uh, hotel. They've, uh, it's an absolutely wonderful place. Not quite as nice as Italy for the food. <laughs> there, it's absolutely outstanding. Uh, but another thing to think about, too, is when you're traveling to Europe, you know, everyone tends to think, well, I have to go in the summertime, but I tell you, the last few summers have been very hot and they're very busy. I was in Rome in January and I've just come back from Portugal in February. So off season, the temperatures are very nice and, and you know, 16 to 18 degrees in Ireland. OK, it'll be maybe around 10 right now this time of year, but it doesn't take long for it to warm up. So it's very, very comfortable to be traveling off season, too. So uh, just consider that. We do have one question that's just popped up here. Uh, both of you did a great job, thoroughly enjoyed. Thank you so much. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you so much, Marilyn, for that comment. Great. Thank you. If anyone has any <laughs> questions, please feel free to just drop them in the box there. So any other comments, um, Kelsey or Rob, about traveling to Europe? Any other tips that you would suggest? Rob, do you have anything? Yes, if you're going to go to Italy, I would always, always, always recommend you haggle with whoever tells you the price of whatever it is, because the <laughs> price is what they tell you is not the real price. You can always get a little bit of a deal. <laughs> That's a great. <laughs> you gotta have a little bit of confidence in yourself to do it. You know the price better than they do, right? So that's that's the trick. That's, that's, <laughs> that's wonderful. Trick. Great. Okay, so there's no further questions in there. Um, I'll just ask you to advance the slide there for me, Kelsey. So see your trusted travel professionals will follow up with you and you may have some more questions that you may think about later on or just dive into all the tour options because as uh, Kelsey and Rob shared with you, they just gave you a taste of the tours and the, you, the, your travel counselor will certainly find the right travel style for you, whether it's active or a little bit slower pace, we'll find the right fit for you. And of course, we've got the exclusive member benefits and our show offers that we talked about tonight. And of course, being your one-stop shop for all of your travel needs, including your travel insurance, where you're gonna be saving up to 20%. So upcoming travel talks, you can just hit that QR code there on the left, uh, put your phone up to that and you can grab that. The next one we're doing is next Tuesday. We're going to be cruising with Viking Cruise Lines on the oceans and river. And if you want to share this presentation with your family or friends in any of our past travel talks, you can just click the QR code there on the right. And that should be today's uh, travel talk will be up in a couple of days. And you can just share that for your friends or family that may want to join you on um, 
on a wonderful excursion to Europe and what a wonderful Valentine gift that would be too. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, to save you time, whether you want to come in and see us in person, if you want to work with us over the phone or, you know, do we can do a, a Zoom video presentation, whatever your uh, style is, we'll certainly accommodate. And you can just click that QR code there and our travel counselors would be happy to set an appointment up. You can just do that virtually right online there. All right. So no further questions, uh, Rob and Kelsey, that was wonderful. Thanks for sharing the journey to Europe. And I hope we've given you a taste of uh, of a few destinations. There definitely are a lot more, but Europe is absolutely a fantastic place to travel. Again, consider the off season where it's not quite so busy and, and warm in the summer, and it's a great place to visit. It sure is. Thank you so much for having us, Karen. All right. Have a great evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Bye.